Well, last week was all about Spain. That's why there haven't been any uploads for the last week or so, so I do apologize for that. A lot of you have asked me how the competition went. It was the Iberian Masters. Right at the end of this video is a, a short trailer just to give some of you a bit of a teaser about the future video that's on its way, which covered the whole trip. So to kick off tonight, I've also got about a week's worth of questions that I haven't answered that you guys have been asking. So here is a quick Q&A slot for you just to go through some of the questions that you guys have asked. Hi Jamie, can you recommend a carp rod for fishing up to 40 meters on commercials? I've been using the S-Class over the last year or so, but I've switched to the Horizon Carp Feeder now. I use that in two versions, a 10 foot version and an 11 foot version, 3.3 meters and 3.6 meters. I'm gonna be using those over the next two weekends, so keep your eyes out for those two videos where I'll just be showing you that rod. That is basically the rod that I use for all my commercial carp fishing up to around 40 meters. Hi Jamie, have you ever used fluorocarbon? I completely understand why people use fluorocarbon. I've spoke to a lot of lads that do use it and I completely understand the reason why they say they use it. I completely understand. But I haven't had the luxury and don't get the luxury to spend hours and hours on the bank trying these things out just to kind of decide whether they're for me or not. So because I haven't had a chance to try it out, I just haven't switched to fluorocarbon. I'm quite happy with using what I'm using, which is just mono, but I completely understand the reasons why people think it's good. Hi Jamie, how many years have you been fishing and has it always been feeder fishing? <laughs> I've fished since I was about five or six year old, used to go with my dad, I used to fish a little bit and obviously back then used to get lots of tangles and things like that as you do and occasionally I used to lose interest and just go for nice long walks. One of the first things my dad ever did for me was make sure I went through swimming lessons so that when we did go off to the, some of these beautiful rivers in North Yorkshire, the Swale and the Nid and all these venues, I could just go, wander off um, on my own and just go I used to go bird watching and all sorts and obviously knowing that I could swim and all that sort of stuff it just it was a bit of peace of mind for my dad while he was fishing I just pleasure fished then until I was about 14 15 years old then I got involved with Sheffield Juniors and that's when I got a little bit more interested into match fishing my dad ran a fishing club as well so I used to run matches and fish the matches at the club there and then I got trials to fish for Sheffield did okay got trials to fish for Young England I got picked to fish the Home International in Ireland, in Southern Ireland, where I fished with Will Raisin, the same age as Will. And then that was it. I went to college, went to university, didn't really fish much at all, just pleasure fish for a while. And then it was about 2010, I think it was. I went on a club match, broke a match record with 119 pound of hide, I think it was, on a six meter pole fishing shallow with caster, all hide. And that kind of got me back into match fishing. I suddenly thought, you know what, I kind of missed this. And that's when I suddenly got serious about it again. So, so yeah, I've fished since I was about six years old. Will you be fishing any of the Boston Masters qualifiers this year? Yes, I will. It's a competition I love. But as with a lot of people over the last few years, my priorities seem to change almost yearly now. You know, I'm not an angler that wants to keep going down and doing the same thing, fishing the same competitions. If I was purely interested in getting results, yes, I would do that. I'd fish the same competitions week in, week out, year in, year out. Obviously, get to know the venue, specialise on those venues, and hopefully get results. But I'm not all about that. I'm all about improving my game. Yes, I'm a feeder angler, but there are so many different disciplines within feeder fishing. Natural venues, rivers, commercials, fishing for small fish, fishing for carp, fishing for bream, fishing for skimmers, winter skimmers, summer skimmers. There's so many different variables involved in feeder fishing now because there are competitions right the way through the calendar and one thing I'm doing more this year that a lot of you know is I'm moving into Europe more and wanted to fish more competitions in Europe just to get a flavour for that sort of fishing and the kind of kit and the kind of techniques that are involved. So yes I will be fishing some of the Boston Masters qualifiers this year but only about three or four. Hi Jamie, is there any chance you can give us a video about your preparation the night before a match? Yes I can, I can do that, you know, and I will do that, you know, I'll set it up properly and do it properly for you. Like I say, most of my fishing is feeder fishing, so prep is really down to a bare minimum to be fair. It's, it's not too bad at all, I'm on top of my hook lens and all that sort of stuff, but yeah, I'll definitely do a video on that for you. Our message here from Andrew, Andrew asked about the possibility of me of doing some kind of group coaching sessions. 
obviously the sessions I do right now are just with me and they cover anything. Some lads have got in touch with me just because they want to learn how to cast to 40 or 50 metres. So I've gone out with them for two or three hours and things like that. Some lads want to have a full day on the bank covering all sorts. Some lads just want to just have a day's fishing, that sort of thing, and just have a look at the kit that I use. And Andrew's um, kindly offered or suggested that I get together with possibly another feeder angler and just having like a bit of a group session where there's five or ten people with another angler. Yes, it's certainly an opportunity, um, Andrew, and thanks for suggesting that, I really appreciate it. It's all down to which angler I do that with and their availability, but yeah, I'll put the feelers out and um, you know, it might be of more interest to a lot of lot of you because obviously then you'll be getting two perspectives from two, two different anglers. So, Andrew, I'll look into that for you. Can you do a video about casting up to 60 metres? Yeah, I can. I mean, there are so many topics and subjects, like every one of these I've covered now already, I could almost do a video on each one, but I don't want to just do a video for the sake of doing a video. If there's genuine interest in videos on all these little subjects that I'm just answering, answering verbally, please let me know below, okay, because I can do that. Content is what I need to produce these videos, and if these relevant topics are good enough for a video in their own right, please let me know. So yes, I can do that, casting up to 60 meters. It's really about the kit that you're using more than the technique at that range. But yes, if that's something you really want, just comment below, let me know, and I'll put it together for you. Can you suggest a deep water mix? Can Special G Green be used in deep water? Yes, of course it can. I've talked about this before, and I'm, I'm no mad professor when it comes to ground baits, I will openly admit, and a lot of the mixes I use, I'm not always that concerned about what's in them. I like to know if it's fish meal or cereal based and I like to know how it mix up, mixes up as regards consistency and I like to know what kind of feed values in there. Other than that I'm certainly no professor. I've never worked in the bait industry. I'm purely a sponsored angler. I'm sponsored by Bait Tech and the mixes that I use I don't know what a lot of these ingredients are but I know if a mix is right for a situation. I like to find a mix that I'm happy with. You know, a mix that you that you're confident with and then just kind of adapt it to the style of fishing that you're using because you can do that with some mixers in this particular scenario deep water sometimes if you find a mix like for example if you like a mix on a shallow water like special g green i use that in shallow water i use it at, at barston i've used it at um, southfield places like that but when i was in the feeder masters final i also used it there where it's about 25 30 feet deep at bow beach i used the same kind of ground bait and all i did was switch it to a plastic feeder whereas when i fish with it in shallow water i use a cage feeder sometimes i'm not saying that is the answer but what i'm saying is sometimes something as simple as that can just help you use the same mix but in deeper water and just get it to behave the way you want it to can you do more can you do more videos on fishing on rivers yes of course a lot of you have probably noticed or maybe not noticed is that i haven't done a video for a while where i've actually gone out on the bank and just shot a video where i just go out with a topic in mind with the relevant kit go and find a venue that's suitable and just have a day filming i haven't done that for a while purely because i haven't had a spare day to do it so all the videos i've really been doing have kind of been based around the matches that i'm on because i'm already out on a match the recent videos have just been me out on a, on a match where I've taken the video kit along with me purely because I'm already on that match. So I haven't really had the opportunity to go on rivers because I haven't had any matches on rivers. I've got a couple of um, Feeder Masters tickets that are on venues that I don't usually fish so hopefully they're going to be of interest. One of those is on the River Trent as well and I think I've got one for the River Yare or Yar. Um, and if I'm still in qualification um, mode chasing at that stage then i will be going along to those so yeah hopefully there will be some videos coming from rivers will you be doing a feeder masters series again this year <laughs> um i'm hoping my pursuit of trying to get in the feeder masters final this year isn't going to go like last year's did i went on way too many qualifiers last year i locally admit i was going to venues that i wasn't really too keen on going to the alarm clock was going off in the morning and I, there were some matches i wasn't looking forward to and i vowed i would never put myself in that position again fishing for me is not a job it's a pastime it's a it's a hobby it's my release from work so i only want to be good at venues that i'm genuinely enthusiastic about and i think you know it reflected in my fishing that i was going to some venues i wasn't really bothered about and i think it reflected in my fishing i really did and it, it certainly affected how well i or how little i enjoyed that competition last year so i've only got a few tickets this year and i'm only going, going to be going to venues that i really want really want to fish so yes i'll take the video um, equipment along with me and film some of it for you do you ever use maggot feeders at places like Southfield and Barston? Um, it's very rare. I've used them at Barston. 
I've, I've used maggot feeders at Boston, especially in winter, and I've never used a maggot feeder at Southfield. You know, maggot feeders are obviously about feeding maggots, and I think when you're fishing, certainly Southfield, you're thinking more about bream and that sort of thing, and I, I'm, I much prefer to fish chopworm, and that sort of a dead red maggots are great, but no, never at Southfield, but I have done it at Boston. If you ever fish a match and you feel as though you've got it wrong, do you ever go back to the same peg and try and get it right? <clears throat> no, I don't. Purely because, A, I just don't have the luxury to do that. You know, I, I, I can't pick a day out of thin air and say, oh, I'm going to go back to that peg and try and get it right. And B, if you do do that and it's not a match, it's a completely different scenario from being in a match. So you're not going to get a true reading. Every day is different and, you know, the biggest thing or the biggest bit of advice I can give any of you and you know I'm sure you all know this is that try your very best to come away from a match if you've got it wrong for whatever reason or you've not caught or even if you, you haven't weighed in or whatever if you've got it wrong or even if you think there were no fish there just try and take something away from that match there's nothing worse than going on a match on a really rubbish match not winning anything and coming home still confused and thinking I haven't got a clue what went wrong there. I honestly don't know what went wrong. A lot of people go down the route of just saying, I was drawn out of it, there were no fish there, which is fine, that may be the case, but I'm not one that likes to do that. I always like to believe that at some stage there's a fish in your peg, even if you're blank, at some stage in five hours, there's gonna be fish out there in front of you. So just try and get something out of the session. Even if it means you've got to eat a bit of humble pie and go and speak to somebody who has done well, Go and say hello, find out, just something. Even if you've fished a different line, a different ground mate mix, it might not be the answer as to why you've had a rubbish match, but at least it just gives you some kind of a difference from what you've done. And, you know, let's face it, that's the only way you get better and improve, just by gaining that knowledge. And the only way you can do that is just by getting on the bank, fishing, and if you don't get it right, speak to the people that have. Well that's it, there's still loads more questions to go through but I'm not going to do them all in one hit because tonight is Friday night, it's the weekend, I'm sure you're all looking forward to some fishing. So this week seems to have been a very very busy week for the news and product launches for some of the products from Matrix and Baytech. So one of the questions I got asked this week and I seem to get asked it every time there's a release of products is people tend to ask me what products out of the range that have come out or that now are available which are the ones that are of more interest to me and which ones are going to have a big impact on my own personal fishing. So, here's just a quick summary of some of those products. Well, Bait Tech have launched loads of baits this week. You know, even I've lost track of some of them. Obviously, some of them are more specimen orientated. I've got some here just to quickly show you. I'm going to show you very, very quickly. These are the ones that I've hand-picked out because these are the ones that you're probably going to see me using over the course of the year because these are the ones that I think are really really going to be suited to my style of fishing. Well, the first one that I'm going to hand-pick for you is one that I'm going to be using this weekend and next weekend at Larford Lakes. They are the 8mm juice-flavoured dumbbells. Smell fantastic. You can see the colour of them. I'll try and get a close-up for you. They're 8mm. I think 8mm is a fantastic size. It's not too large, not too small. It's not too selective where you're only going for a really big carp. An 8mm size bait like that can also catch you skimmers and bream as well. And let's face it, at this time of year, certainly on Larford at the moment, some of the areas you really are just fishing for a bite. So if a two or a three pound skimmer is going to come along when you're fishing for a carp, you know, it's a welcome bonus, you know. So baits like that can be fantastic because they're not too selective. So I'm going to be using them certainly over the next two weekends. And I'm sure I'll be using them through the middle of the year as well. Next one, hemp and corn in a tin. Look at that, it's the super seed range. Fantastic, obviously we've, we sell hemp and we sell corn as well, but to get a mix like that in a tin, it's fantastic because, especially for myself as a feeder angler, you tend to find that in particle baits like this, you know, you're not using a massive amount of it. Sometimes you get bait companies that sell hemp and they come in great big bags like this, and let's face it, when you're feeder fishing, unless you're sat on a pile of fish, it's difficult to feed that amount of bait. To, to you guys out there, or the majority of you out there that have to go out and buy all this kind of stuff, it just helps you be a lot more um, economical with your bait. A tin like that will obviously last you a session, there's hemp in there, but there's corn in there as well. So, you know, you're putting corn through, and that obviously means that there are pieces of corn in there as well that you can use on the hook. Certainly this time of year, you might only be putting 10 pieces on it throughout a whole match. 
that's perfect you're not opening a full tin and you know it just helps you be a lot more economical and that's definitely something i'm going to be carrying in my kit bag certainly through the summer months one of the ground baits i talked to you about through testing and through the pod start stage was the juice ground bait that's it in its official packaging i'm sure a lot of you already know the flavor um it's quite a light color mix it's really really sweet i think I'm going to find uses for this that I didn't think I'd envisage at first. When it was going through prototype stage, I honestly kind of thought it was going to be a bit more of a, a commercial carp type of ground bait, and I thought that was what it was going to be. But I've just got a really funny feeling because it's so sweet, because it's quite fine, I think this is going to be a new favoured skimmer mix on commercials. And the other one that I know a lot of you have asked about, the good old faithful Pro Natural Range Fine Lake. I'm sure a lot of you know that even when we use the Pro Natural Dog, which is what I like to use in Ireland and, and places like that on natural venues, sometimes we don't do it in Ireland, but certainly this year when it's hard and in, in, in winter, cold water, we like to sieve off some of the feed, you know, some of the bits of hemp and all that sort of stuff. This is a fine version of that, which means you don't have to do any of that. This is a mix I'm really excited about using on some of the natural venues I'm going to be going to. Really looking forward to using that in competition because I haven't used this in any competitions yet, purely because even through prototype testing and uh, and the trialing period, I never got a chance to use it in matches because I wasn't going on the venues where I could use it because at that period I was going on commercials. This is it's a non fish meal mix, it's cereal, which means it's ideal for roach and perch and skimmers. Brilliant natural venue mix. So that is definitely going to be one I'm going to be using this year. Well, that covers the Bait Tech products, but what about Matrix? Matrix have been releasing news of all sorts of different products that are going to be coming out over the next few weeks. A lot of um, terminal type kit, and I'm not going to them all now purely because I've got them here to show you right now, and I don't just want to show you a printout because that's rubbish. So, but I will show you them as they are being rolled out. But the one product that I've been asked about a lot, purely because it, it really reflects the style of fishing that I do all over the country and all over Europe as well now, are these new feeders. A lot of you will have already seen them because there's been a bit of a buzz around them. These are still wrapped up because these are the ones that I originally went out for the original prototypes and testing. They are the bell feeders. I'll do a close up of these so you can see them. I'm sure some of you have seen them already. It's a unique design. I've been told, because I don't actually know, it's a new manufacturing process or a combination of two manufacturing processes to achieve these feeders. This is a 40 gram version. And as you can see, a lot of you will already know that these feeders are designed for feeding large quantities of particle baits like maggot and castor, and obviously chopworm. You know, obviously it's just basically designed very similar to the dome feeder which we obviously produce and it's basically designed to be a basket of food you can just scoop that into your maggots or casters and then you can just cap it with a minimal of ground bait at the end and then obviously because of the shape of them very aerodynamic and cast incredibly well and the weight is built into the base it's a gradual as you can see it's a gradual mold but the base is where all the weight is there which will help cast casts really really well and you know this is something i'm going to be using more in the summer when um, i'm going to be feeding more particles especially when you're fishing positive for lots of fish certainly in ireland they'll be a fantastic tool in ireland i've got two versions here the 30 gram version and the 40 gram version and a lot of you who fish in ireland like to wind fish on and all that sort of stuff that feeder is also ideal for that because as you can see because of the design on it that will lay on the bottom and if you do want to move your feeder in any way like a lot of people do that moves incredibly easy across the bottom. So that will allow that not to dig in the bottom like some feeders do. It's a feeder that I think, you know, it's something that we're gonna to have to carry on most venues through throughout the summer months. And um, yeah, I'm really looking forward to seeing how they take off this year. Well, that's enough about the news. I know a lot of you like to know what I'm up to, and what I'm getting up to, especially when I'm not doing daily uploads like I was in January. This weekend, this weekend I am off to Larford Lakes because the following weekend, I've got the 12,000 pound final at Larford Lakes, which Phil Briscoe's running. It's brilliant just to be in that final. You can imagine some of the names that are gonna be competing in that. This Sunday is an open match, but it's actually designed to be a bit of a practice for that final. 
so it's a bit of a taster. I haven't been to Larford for weeks and weeks and weeks. I just haven't had a chance to get there and practice. Whether practice it would have done any good or not, I don't know because it's been fishing so hard. I don't honestly think I would have learned anything from it if I'd done that anyway. So I'm going down there on Sunday with Martin Edis. We're going to fish that open match and that will be just about my only practice session before the two day final the weekend after. So two weekends now are all about Lawford Lakes where hopefully um, I'm going to be going into that final well prepared and the old drawing hand is going to do the business as well. So that's where I am this weekend. It's Friday night. Really appreciate you tuning in tonight. Thanks very much, really appreciate all the fantastic comments, loads of videos coming. Please, the Q&A slots, like I said, if each one of those questions or any of those single questions warrant a video in their own right, please let me know below because I can do that. Content, ideas, or what I need. Thanks for watching, really appreciate it. Have a fantastic weekend. Now, here it is, a bit of a taster. It's the trailer for the Iberian Masters video which will be coming later on this month as soon as I get a chance to edit it for you. So hope you enjoy the trailer, hope it gives you a taster for it and I hope you're going to be looking forward to the feature length epic video when it comes later on this month. Thanks for watching, have a fantastic weekend, see you all next week. Well in six hours time I'm meant to be setting off for Manchester Airport, we're on our way to the Iberian Masters in Spain. To be honest, it's bad already. It's very touch and go at the moment. Well, if it doesn't come again, that should give us a fighting chance. Carousel has finished. All three of my kit bags are still in Manchester. Not impressed. Mm.